and you're pressing so, so hard, and sometimes it'll sound like nothing, basically. Today, I'm gonna show you the five things that are the most fundamental to be able to play the guitar. Overlooked, I think, by a lot of people in a lot of lessons. Hey everybody, Johnny Stewart here from Johnny Stewart's Guitar Lounge. So today I'm going to show you the five things that I think are the most fundamental for people to be able to play the guitar. So the first thing that you need to be able to do to play the guitar actually has something to do with why I'm sitting outside today. And I've got my new Vola guitar that I got at the NAMM show that's unplugged. You see there's no jack chord, there's no amplifier. And the first thing you need to be able to do to play the guitar is to be able to make a note come out when you play something on the strings and when you press down on the strings. Now that might sound kind of funny for anybody who's played a while, but think back to when you started playing. For someone just starting to play the guitar, you don't know how to make a sound come out and you're pressing so so hard and sometimes it'll sound like like nothing basically and that's okay that happens to all of us I've given a few lessons over the years where I've sat down with somebody and right at the very beginning of the lesson they can actually make a sound come out most people cannot so my first lesson is usually teaching people finger by finger <laughs> just how to make a sound come out when you press the strings down on the fretboard. So how do you do that better? You do that by practicing and playing as much as you can. And I'm sitting outside today and I'm just running through little exercises and just practicing to get my fingers warmed up. Those are not just warm-ups, those are also things you can do to learn how to play the guitar and to learn how to press down on the strings hard enough to make a sound come out. Another tip for that is that when you're starting out it's easier to press down on lighter gauge strings like 9s or 10s as opposed to heavier gauge strings like 11s or 12s or higher still. So I would recommend when you're starting to play use lighter gauge strings. And this first tip also kind of doubles as a tip for more experienced players too because you can sit around your house and just do different finger exercises even if you played for years. You can always play faster, you can always play better, you can always learn new techniques and new things. Now the second thing that you have to be able to do to play the guitar is overlooked, I think, by a lot of people in a lot of lessons um, early on. And that is that you have to be able to tune your guitar because nobody really is going to enjoy hearing the guitar or even playing the guitar if it sounds like this when you try to play a basic G chord or a basic C chord. Can you hear that? That's not so hot, is it? So what you need to do is you need to be able to tune the guitar. Now tuning your guitar is one of the easiest things you can do when you're starting to play and it'll help you just to hear the notes and start to hear the pitches and hear everything in your head. So you might as well go ahead and learn how to do it now so that you can practice in tune and hear how everything is supposed to sound when it's perfectly in tune. There's also no excuse these days to not tune up your guitar properly every time you practice right at the beginning because you've got electric tuners, you've got battery power tuners, you've got a tuner in GarageBand, which honestly is probably one of the most accurate ones I've used in 25 years of playing the guitar. You've got apps on your iPhone, or you can do it the old-fashioned way. And I'm not going to go through and painstakingly show you how to tune the guitar by ear right now, but because frankly, when you're starting out, you should probably just go ahead and spend the 10 or 15 bucks and buy a tuner so you can make sure that it's perfectly in tune. And also, you don't even have to do that if you have an iPhone or I think any kind of smartphone. With those free tuner apps, you can download. So I'll spare you some of the excitement because I've been playing for over 25 years. So I've gotten to the point where I can pretty much tune up without having to do a whole lot of checking, luckily, which has taken a lot of practice over the years. But then, once you get it in tune, doesn't that sound better? So now the third thing that you have to know how to do to be able to play the guitar is to have at least a basic understanding of some of the basic open chords. Now, B.B. King is an exception to that rule. My understanding is that B.B. King did not know how to play any actual chords, but B.B. was obviously one of the best lead guitar players and one of the best showmen who ever lived. So even if you can't play a single chord, you can still have a very successful music career and become an icon just like B.B. King. But for most of us, it's best if we can learn at least a few chords. So those are basic chords like the C and like the G, some people play a G like this. I think anybody who's seen my other videos knows I hate that, and I'll link my video on that and on the better way to play a G chord. But when you're just starting out, you want to have a good A, you want to have a good B, which by definition is not really an open chord, except I've got other videos on how to play this chord shape with these two fingers, like a modified bar chord, basically. So you can check that out. And then a good C chord, a good D, 
a good E, a good F, which I have a video from a few months ago on how to play an F chord, and then a good G, and then look, you're at the top of the scale again, back to A. So if you learn all those chords, you will be able to play a whole lot of songs. Now the fourth thing you have to be able to do to play the guitar is you have to be able to stay in rhythm and keep a beat. Especially if you're going to be playing rhythm guitar, which is how most people start. You want to be able to play in time and keep a steady beat. Nobody wants to play with somebody who can play and they can play some chords, but they don't know how to keep time at all. And you can say that's the drummer's job, but you know what? You also have to be able to strum in time as well. So you're in luck. I've actually got a video on how to keep time and how to strum. There are metronomes available on Google. You just Google metronome and a metronome comes right up and right. you can go as slow as you need at first to practice that. Just one, two, three, four. And then eventually you'll get more advanced. And then the fifth thing you have to do if you want to be able to play the guitar is you have to practice. And some people set aside certain amounts of time during the day, 15 minutes, 5 minutes, 30 minutes, 3 hours. I remember seeing an interview with Steve Vai where he said that when he was learning how to play, he would practice for like 10 or 12 hours a day and keep a very regimented schedule, 2 hours on this, 2 hours on this, 2 hours on this. You don't have to be that <laughs> particular about it, but you do have to practice. Pick up the guitar every day, even if it's only for 5 or 10 minutes. Just pick up the guitar, run through some different things, play some different chords and some different techniques, and watch some videos on YouTube. You can watch my videos on YouTube for more tips. Subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with everything that's going on in Johnny Stewart's Guitar Lounge. Lots more lessons, lots more performances, and videos of some great guitar players, not me. And you can see all sorts of cool stuff. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, because it really does make a huge difference for YouTube, pushing the video out so that other people can see it and hopefully learn from it as well. Comment below and let me know what else you'd like to see, and I will see you next time in Johnny Stewart's Guitar Lounge. Take care.